The land of words with flera. There's a tasty one, chingadera. Its spice is bold beyond compara, but use it wisely with great care. It dances on the tongue, debonera, but might cause a stir, so beware. Chingadera is fun, a word so rara. Just be mindful. When you share us. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Coffee and Headlines. This is our morning get-together live here on Facebook, where we take a look at news from our city, state, and country. And we take a look at your comments, ideas, questions, suggestions on how to better connect with each other, how to better connect with our city, Puerto Vallarta. As a community of English-speaking locals, today is Saturday, July 6th. And as always, it is a pleasure to get together with you this morning it is humid it stopped raining for the last couple of days and we're hoping that this this will change because there hasn't been a lot of wind blowing so it's been a little schwitzy but these morning gatherings are always great for me they're great for the soul and what can i tell you we we like it right luna luna says meow so today we have a couple of news, nothing too important to share, but we uh, it's a good thing that I went out and about yesterday and I brought my camera with me because we're going to have a lot of uh, show and tell of things that I saw as I was walking to the supermarket and back. And uh, there's some interesting news that are going to come out of that because I realized that some restaurants are moving and... Uh, it's all a good thing. Oh, and I did stop by the new tuk-tuk. Uh, well, I don't want to get ahead of me, of myself. Let me just get started with, oh, a dark screen. Let's change that quickly. Bum, ba -dum, bum, bum. Da, 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 sometime before Christmas. Boom. There you go. I love it when the press takes good, clear photographs. This is about the relationship between Puerto Vallarta and Santa Barbara. In California, this is a sister city relationship that dates back to 1972. As such, it is the longest sisterhood our city has. Representatives of both cities gathered yesterday at City Hall in front of a bunch of white chairs to celebrate the anniversary of the relationship. Yes, a bunch of white chairs. I wonder where everybody went. I don't know, but what I do know is that the Friendship Fountain located on the Malecon is one of the most noticeable contributions that have arisen from this sisterhood. Um, so may it continue for many, many years. Then yesterday, was it yesterday? No, a couple of days ago, I got in touch with uh, my friend Carmen from Oculto, and we decided we would like sit down and take a look at the survey that um, 
that we put together. And first of all, I want to thank everybody that participated on the survey. I've said this before, and I'll say it again here at Coffee and Headlines. We love surveys because there is just so much interesting stuff to be derived from them when the questions are well prepared. And in this particular case, um, Oculto, Carmen and Claudia were curious about plans to pursue during the summer months, which have a different dynamic for them than the winter months. You, um, for those of you that don't know it, and this is worth mentioning, Oculto is a private dining space where you can either enjoy occasionally scheduled public dinners uh, or you can gather your group of, of as many as 15 friends and have a private dinner. And this, of course, is um, catered by the team, which has many, many years of experience in a formerly famous restaurant. Well, it's still famous. It just is, doesn't exist anymore. Um, a restaurant here in Puerto Vallarta called uh, El Arrayan. El Arrayan was a Mexican specialty restaurant. And by that, I mean not a restaurant of just tacos and enchiladas and stuff like that, like popular Mexican food, but a restaurant that actually explore the culinary tradition of Mexico. Well, they continue to do this in these private dinners, and I'm very happy to collaborate with my friends Carmen and Claudia on this venture. So as far as the results that we got from the survey, um, you may be interested to know that a number of people did not even know what Oculto was. And that doesn't surprise me. And I said to Carmen, you know, don't take it personally. But the reality is that it is challenging today for anybody that is promoting anything, myself included, to get people's attention. There are so many things to look at online, in social media. There are so many points of distraction. But Oculto now knows that a more sizable marketing effort needs to be made in the future. Also, on the survey, some of the ideas that were brought up had to do with um, food to go, like maybe food to be prepared once a week, and once a week you go and you get your containers. And they are also interested in uh, the possibility of selling canned uh, salsas and things like that. And of course, all these ideas were reacted to very favorably from people that answered the survey. So again, thank you for participating. Ultimately, those who benefit from these kinds of exercises are us because we are ultimately expressing our opinion about something that is going to benefit us as consumers in the future. If anybody out there is interested in surveys um, and would like to pull our captive audience, well, we love surveys, we love answering them, we love putting them together, so just let me know. And that's what I wanted to share about Oculto. I look forward to hearing what Carmen and Claudia will put together, <clears throat> excuse me, for the next coming months. Moving right along, I want to show you a photograph that stirred me and not in the best possible way. You, if you have traveled Carretera or Highway 200 South towards El Tuito and so forth and so on, you know probably that there's a spot along the highway before is it before Mismaloya? Yes, I think it is before Mismaloya, where the path of the highway was actually detoured. And of course, we're talking about uh, the spot at Garza Blanca. And Garza Blanca is a beachfront hotel that opened many years ago. And they also have land developed up on the mountains, which used to be a Hido land, by the way. And, um, of course, when um, there was a stir way back when the owner of Garza Blanca decided, well, let us change the path of a federal highway. Isn't it as simple as just blocking it and starting a new path? And things got controversial and ugly because there was no authorization. People complained. Long story short, the highway path was authorized, the change. And it happened. And now those of us that traveled down the highway... Um, take the new path. But what is not readily apparent, unless you're looking at Google Maps 
or an aerial photograph is how much this development has carved into the mountain. And there is very little we can do about this other than to talk about it. But if you look at it, there are these buildings. And then there's all this chingadera going on here. And there's a road that goes up this way. And there are other roads that go up this way. So how did this land stop being a Hido land? And how did this land change hands to a private entity that has chosen to tear down the mountains? Oh my God, I'm going to get sequestered or killed by talking about this. No, I'm not. But, you know, this is one of those things that makes us think or makes me think about how when environmentalists get all worked up about something, you know, it's because it's real and it is happening. And I thought I would share that photograph with you just for some awareness. And speaking of awareness, I have an update map of um, what's going on with uh, the hurricanes this morning. Um, well, first of all, Beryl, who's here, has gone through Yucatan Peninsula and now is heading north. Apparently, it's not going to touch the rest of Mexico and it's heading directly into the United States where it's going to touch land sometime on Monday morning, as indicated by this map. And little old Alida, who is over here in the Pacific Ocean, well, Alida became a tropical storm, nothing more than that. It's heading west, so we won't be majorly affected by it. Let us take a look at what the weather has for us, but first, let's have a look at this. In next week's music appreciation presentation, titled Mambo Madness, we take a look at mambo, a genre of Cuban music pioneered in the late 1930s and later popularized in the big band style by Perez Prado. You will discover how the music became a dance craze in Mexico and the United States until it was dethroned by cha-cha-cha. As usual, we will rely on video and audio selections to tell the story of this music, which has had a major impact around the world. The meeting is on Thursday, July 11 at the Joint Boutique Hotel and Co-Work on Insurgentes Street at 5 p.m. The music will be hot and tickets are already available for purchase at the front desk, but rest assured, we will enjoy the experience in air-conditioned comfort. Hope to see you there, and thank you for spreading the word. Yeah, Mambo. Uh, let's see. What? Rain stopping in 14 minutes, USA, USA, USA. Whatever. Um, it is 30 degrees out there right now. Humidity is at 80%. Somebody find me a pool so that I can go swimming, please. Our weather forecast for today says rain in the morning with thunderstorms in the afternoon, a chance of rain of 55%, a high of 32, and a low of 26. Tomorrow, mostly clear skies in the morning with thunderstorms in the afternoon, a chance of rain of 60%, a high of 32, and a low of 26. And then... On Monday, we start the work week with mostly cloudy skies in the morning with thunderstorms in the afternoon, a chance of rain of 50%, a high of 31, 31, and a low of 26. Now, so yesterday, as I mentioned, I had been wanting to go and check the new uh, Tuk Tuk's, Tuk Tuk's, Tuk Tuk's uh, Asian restaurant that is... Um, near my house in Colonia Versalles, but um, I also needed to go grocery shopping. So I decided I'm going to go to the former um, Mega, which is now a Soriana, and I am going to walk past the place. I had made plans to maybe have dinner there with another friend later on that day, but those plans flopped. But I did stop by and take some photographs along the way. So 
let's do a little bit of show and tell of my adventure. So um, I hope you're amused. Uh, for starters, you know, I walked to this empty lot, which is not far from my house on Francisco Villa. Of course, a lot of people are wondering exactly what's going to go in that block, which was leveled not too long ago. And right next to it is, of course, um, Dr. Simi. I had to stop by and get some medications. And wasn't it wonderful that while I was there, I found out that Dr. Simi is now available in chain, in keychain format. Food for thought. There are many different variations. Well, there are four different variations, but I was delighted to learn this. And then, of course, I continued walking down Francisco Villa. This is walking towards the Libramiento because I knew that I had to turn right to go find the new restaurant. Along the way, I spotted this window. This is right across the street from Los Muertos Brewing, and I had to take a photograph of the wrought iron, um, which is kind of stony. Stonery. I don't know. I don't even know what the word is. So anyhow, I continued walking and then I turned right onto Morelia Street and there was Tuk Tuk's. There is the entrance. You will see it on the right hand side. This is a street, by the way, uh, where buses that are coming from Francisco Villa and heading to El Centro. This is the street where they turn right. So right as you turn right, you will find Tuk Tuk's right there. And I walked in and I was taken by a lot of wall art that obviously they commissioned for the space. The space is open, so I hope they're going to put a lot of fans out there. Uh, thank you for that, Pat. Pat says the word is trippy. <laughs> I'll get back to that in a second. Um, anyhow, um, the restaurant is is open, although it is it, there's a roof there. So, I mean, if, if it starts raining, you will not get wet. But it is open. Um, I stopped by around 1 o'clock. So they were just setting up. I understand that they open at 2 o'clock. And it is nice and spacious. As I mentioned, there's a lot of wall art that was commissioned for the restaurant. And the restaurant, of course, um, has a bar area. And if everything looks brand spanking new, it's because they've only been open for business for three days. And... Um, I hope I'll get a chance to check it out sometime in the near future. If anybody happens to go check it out, feel free to let us know how it went. And then I continued walking towards um, towards the supermarket, and I spotted this beautiful mural on the wall, which I'm going to save for a cover for a future Coffee and Headlines uh, show. Or maybe we'll use it today. Yeah, let's just use this today as our cover. Why not? And of course... When, I, when you get to Medina Asensio, this is what Medina Asensio northbound looks like, which is very, very chaotic. But hey, they're now at the final stretch and they have to get this soon, get this done soon, definitely before the new administration comes in. And in contrast, well, this is what we're going to get once it's finished. We're going to get a brand new sidewalk with a brand new bicycle path and that'll be lovely. And after that, of course, I walked into supermarket and got my shopping done. And on the way back home, I got a message from dear friends Brian and Chris and Chris, Brian and Chris, who told me that there is going to be a, a, a restaurant has changed locations. And I am talking, of course, about El Puerco de Oro, which has amazing amazing pork carnitas um, and, uh, and and pork belly tacos. And they are on España Street, but apparently they're moving to Merida Street right next to Print PV. And the move should happen mid-month and it's a larger space. So I'm looking forward to that. Now I have both an Asian restaurant and a pork belly restaurant dangerously along the way to supermarkets. How could someone not stop by and check them out? I'll keep you posted on that one. And that's the end of the photos that I have for you today. Of course, this afternoon, it's going to be a fun afternoon as there's the Queen's Bazaar, a joint co-work. I'm going to stop by that. This is starting at, boom, 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 at 2 p.m., 
And then after that, there's another bazaar at uh, Monson starting at 4 p.m. So it's going to be a bazaar afternoon for me. I look forward to a beer at Monson. And of course, I did mention there would be an unboxing. You do not think that I walked out of uh, Farmacia Similares or Dr. Simi without actually getting a keychain. Let's take a look at it together. But first, let's take a look at this. Lucky! <laughs> Of course I had to have one. I think it was like 70 pesos, but now I have my very own Dr. Simi keychain. Let's open this up. La 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 la. Ooh. 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 Oh. Looky. It comes and it's Oh, and it has a handle. Oh my goodness. This is more of a production than I thought. Shall we open it? Of course we shall. He's so cute. Oi, oi. Mm. Ah. Okay. <laughs> and drum roll. Oh, looky. Yes, I know I'm weird. Yes, I don't care. But look at my doctor, Simi. He is now. Come on, focus, focus camera, focus. There it is. Okay, well, it was exciting for me. Ah, happiness. Okay, put that thing away. Let's take a look at your comments for this morning. My God, I'm schwitzing. It's a good thing that the coasters that I make are made of 100% cotton because they serve as face cloths as well. Lots of good mornings this morning. Thank you very much for that. And a couple of good afternoons. Thank you very much for that as well. Looking for cues, looking for interesting comments. Let's see what we find. Linda says, good morning, Cluster. Looking forward to going to the Queen's Bazaar today. That makes two of us. Um... Albert says, oh, Albert had a bad hamburger somewhere. I'm not entirely sure where. And let's see what else we have. Laura asks, does Oculto have a set menu for the private dinners? Um, you get to pick the menu with them based on your preferences. It's a, you know, it's a you suggest, they suggest kind of thing. And of course, the important thing is that they take care of your food, your dietary restrictions. Uh, let's see. Oh, I have to agree with this one because it is true. David says, El Arrayan had the most amazing duck I have ever had. And I have to agree. El Arrayan's duck carnitas. Oh my goodness, they were absolutely wonderful. And served with tortillas on the side to make uh, duck carnita tacos. Yummy. You know, they do show up occasionally at Oculto. When they bring back their traditional El Arrayan menu, they, they do show up from time to time. Uh, let's see what else we have. Purum pum pum. Uh, pa -dum -pam -pam. Makes you wonder how they got away with all that construction when there are half a dozen projects shut down here in town. Well, you know, Mark, the owner of the whole Chingadera is a very powerful, prominent hotelier in town. He was a mayor of Puerto Vallarta once and is just very connected. Uh, so it's not surprising to me that big, powerful moguls like that get away with stuff like what went on in the South Shore in Puerto Vallarta. I hope 
upcoming administrations are mindful of this and um, abide by the law. That's all I can say. Uh, again, thank you for that. I was looking for a good word when I photographed that spiral thing. Trippy is exactly what I was trying to say. Uh, let's see. Pam pam pam. Linda says, Algo Bueno is next door to Puerto de Oro. Great mac and cheese and sandwiches at Algo Bueno. I haven't tried them yet, but thank you very much for that tip. And Charles, you make my day. Charles was at the airport at the beginning of the broadcast. And, um, and now he's on his way. You're on your way to Puerto Vallarta. May the flight be... Uh, Uneventful. That's what I'm trying to say. I spent three days looking at crazy people going crazy on planes on YouTube. And oh, who wants to get on a plane? Um, good call. Linda says, I'm getting a keychain. It's so cute. I know. I am so happy with my Dr. Simi. Yay. Um, I'm easily amused. What can I say? Uh, uh, um... Oh, Albert explains, I had a lousy hamburger in Los Angeles and all I kept thinking about was how delicious they are in Puerto Vallarta at so many places. You are so correct, my dear friend. I am not a hamburger connoisseur, nor am I picky about my burgers, but when I crave one, oh my goodness, I can enjoy a hamburger in a number of places and thank God we have a variety. And Chris says, having them makes you a lucky duck. I hope that has to do with uh, the pork carnitas. I like that pun. Or maybe it has to do with having one of these. Maybe that's another pun. I don't know. All I know is we're out of topics here at Coffee and Headlines. Oh, I forgot to mention, we have all the community sponsors that we need for another year. Yes, thank you very much. As you know, this will be the second year that we appeal to friends that have other businesses in town to become community sponsors here at Coffee and Headlines. Community sponsorship, sponsorship income helps us um, invest in new equipment so that we can stay current and make sure that everything is working the way it's supposed to work. So I will make announcements on Monday or sometime during this coming week. I also now have set a date with Michael Buford for our next mini meet and greet, which is going to take place at Siam PV in Los Tules. And I will get the sign up form so you can reserve your spot out there soon. But please know that it will take place on Tuesday, the 16th of this month. Yes, um, but it is going to be by reservation only. So I will make sure to give you uh, um, the website so that you can register for this sometime this coming week. So have a great weekend. Um, go into the nearest swimming pool you can find and take a dip because it's going to be hot and humid out there and have a great time otherwise. And of course, I will see you on Monday morning. Take care.